Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I thought I would share a little bit of a shopping haul with you today. And of course, as per usual, the dogs decided it's time to start crunching and eating the moment I turn the camera on. Dog owner problems, right? So I went to Coleman, Alabama today, which is a town just a little bit south of where I live, about 20, 25 minutes away. And they have a couple of things that I love, one of which is a mercantile. Now I get so many questions about the speckled enamel ware that I have here in my kitchen. My mixing bowl sets, my butter dish, my, my baking pans, and all of that. People, it, it never fails. Every time they are in a video, someone asks me where I got them from. Um, so that particular mercantile is actually where I have gotten almost every bit of that enamel ware. The only thing that I have not gotten there was my butter dish, only because they've not carried any of the butter dishes. Um, that I did order off of Amazon, but this mercantile has tons of that beautiful enamel ware. Let me just show you a picture that I shared on Instagram earlier today. They have tons of it. I mean, I would love to just take that whole wall and bring it to my house. If I had room for it, I mean, it's just every time I walk in, that's the first thing I go to is straight to the enamel wear because I love it. Now, while you can get a lot of things like from Amazon and places like that, they don't have everything. And I got to tell you, this mercantile's got, they got stuff I didn't even know was made. For instance, today when I walked in, the first thing I saw was a coffee pour over made out of that enamel wear. It was so cute. And if I was a coffee pour over person, I would totally be getting one of those. I almost got one just because, but I didn't need it. Um, I, I'm a little bit old fashioned. Yes, I have a coffee pour over. I've got a French press, but quite frankly, I just brew a normal, classic, old fashioned pot of coffee. I set up my coffee maker every night before I go to bed. I get up to fresh brewed coffee waiting for me so that I can come in here in the dark with just my little antique light on the Hoosier over there and get my cup of coffee in peace. I don't have to think about it <laughs> first thing in the morning. Um, that's just me. I, I feel like if you are starting with good quality coffee to begin with, then it doesn't really matter how you brew it. Um, and I start with good quality coffee. So in any case, uh, the mercantile, as I said, carries all of that amazing enamel ware. They do ship. So if you see something uh, in one of those photos or check out their Instagram or their Facebook page, I will link them down below. Um, you can purchase things from them online or by phone and they will ship so uh, this isn't sponsored or anything it's just I get a ton of questions about the enamel wear and right now I would say the mercantiles definitely got more stuff available than Amazon does so check them out and support a family-owned business so while I was there <laughs> yes I didn't buy myself any enamel wear however I went in hoping to find slotted spoons because I have a couple of those enamel wear spoons, but I don't have any slotted ones. I found something better. Check this out. Look at this gorgeous wooden spoon made here in Alabama. Uh, I asked the lady there who it was that made it. She said it was a guy from Birmingham and they call him the spoon man. So I don't know his name or anything like that, but this is beautiful. Um, I don't know what kind of wood it is. Looking at it, I would guess maybe walnut because uh, it looks a lot like my cutting board that I have over there. And it's beautiful. And this is definitely more unique 
than even the enamel wear slotted spoon. And of course, this couldn't be the only one I got. I also got this one. Look at that. Look at the wood grain in there. Isn't that pretty? So, yeah, I have a thing for wood and for pottery and for antiques. And these two spoons are amazing, <laughs> but I got one more. And this is the first one that I set on the counter. It's humongous, but it's gorgeous. And if this doesn't reach the bottom of my giant stock pot when I am canning, nothing would. Look at that. This is beautiful. This is a piece of art. So there you go. That is what I got from the mercantile today. And then after going to Coleman, I swung around. I kind of did a little bit of a loop and I went through Falkville, Alabama, which is a tiny little town. And actually this wasn't even in town. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But I've taken you there before a while back. Uh, gave you kind of a little mini tour of it. And that is the Mennonite store. It is called the Dutch Oven Bakery. Uh, it's just a little country store in the middle of nowhere. You kind of got to know where it is to know where it is. And so I did a loop, drove through there, stopped and picked up a few things. Um, so first of all, I was going for cheeses. Mr. Smith and I absolutely love their deli. We get meats there and cheeses there. And they have stuff that I've not seen in other places. Um, for instance, this is a marbled Colby Swiss. I mean, you hear about Colby Jack or Cheddar Jack or Monterey Jack, but you don't see Colby Swiss. And I, I love, I love this. So I got a little bit of that. I got some Munster cheese. I got some butter cheese. And I got this one. This is called... Mediterranean Sunset and it actually is a white cheddar but it has like herbs and sun-dried tomatoes and all sorts of stuff in it. It is so good. I think this is one of the very first cheeses we ever bought there. Matter of fact, I think we bought this the very first time we ever went there. Uh, fell in love with it. But mixing the butter cheese and something stronger like a Colby or a sharp cheddar sliced in grilled cheese that's like the perfect grilled cheese sandwich in my in my opinion um, then I picked up a pack of their summer sausage love their summer sausages Mr. Smith loves these and so I picked that up now this is something I've never bought before. They have all sorts of soup mixes and dip mixes and all sorts of seasonings, all sorts of different things that you can purchase, pastas and all that. And I saw these Amish made pot pie noodles. And they look to be, they look sort of like an egg noodle to me. They're square. And I thought these might be interesting to try out in say a chicken soup like a chicken pot pie soup so I think I might make that uh, for Mr. Smith here pretty soon and then while I was there I needed to get bay leaves and thankfully they had some this whole pack of bay leaves right here was a dollar and a half and then I picked up some cornmeal for making cornbread a uh, dollar and a half for this thing and with baking season coming the holidays I stocked up on some brown sugar and finally I got some rolled oats I've actually been out of oats for a while I never think of it when I go to the store and I've kind of been craving a few things so I went ahead and picked those up this great big thing of oats is let's see seven pounds it was six dollars so good deal and then the last thing i got there now 
In some of my recent cooking videos, you probably saw me using some cute little blue and white speckled measuring spoons. And they kind of look like enamelware, they seemed really cute and all that. <sighs> Here's the thing, they weren't real enamelware. I picked them up at a craft store because I thought they were cute. The coating that was on there, the enamelware, it was basically like a giant sticker and it was coming off. So they went into the trash, but I do like having some cute um, measuring spoons. I do have my all-purpose Norpro ones that are amazing. They're square, well they're kind of long and rectangle and they fit into um, spice jars without any issue whatsoever, but I do kind of like having a cute set too. So I saw some today and I picked them up. So these are made out of wood and they sort of look like they've got sunflowers all over them. So I thought these were cute. Now I will test the measurement on these to make sure that they're accurate because sometimes when you get cute um, measuring spoons or measuring cups, the focus was more on them being cute and pretty than it was on them being accurate. So anytime you buy pretty measuring spoons or measuring cups, always verify the measurements and make sure they're accurate. I have a set that hangs on my wall that are pottery and they're, they're just hanging there as a decoration. They're pretty. But as I was looking at them, I'm like, I don't think these measurements are accurate and they're not. So it was a very good thing that I double checked to see how much those spoons actually held because the tablespoon that is over there is almost a quarter of a cup. The spoons are all way, way bigger than the, than the actual measurement. So if I was to try and use those in a recipe, especially something that needs precise measurements like cakes or anything like that, it would have been a total flap. So always double check your measuring spoons, measuring cups when you get them. Um, just double check to make sure they're accurate. All right, so there you go. That is my little haul from the Mercantile and the Mennonite um, grocery store, the Dutch Oven Bakery in Falkville. So now I'm going to get everything put away and uh, get on to the next thing for today. So thanks for joining me here in the kitchen. My name is Constance from Cospelton Cornbread, and I'll talk to y'all next time.